In the past few weeks, I posted videos reviewing USB drives on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the importance of UASP support. Both videos generated a lot of discussion, and there were three things I wanted to cover in this follow-up to those videos. Namely, which drives actually support UASP, some real-world performance benchmarks, and trim support. First, let's talk about UASP. In the last video, I completely forgot to discuss which of the USB drives I tested supported it, and which ones didn't. For a refresher, UASP lets the Raspberry Pi communicate with the drive using SCSI protocol, which is up to twice as fast as the older USB mass storage protocol when you're using an SSD. You can check if your own drive supports it with the command lsusb-t. If it shows UAS, it's using UASP. If it shows USB storage, it's using the slower protocol. So here's a quick graph showing which drives that I tested support it. It looks like all the fastest drives I benchmarked in the last video support it, while the slowest ones don't. No huge surprise there, the faster drives use better chipsets that are built for SSD performance. The Arcanite is an outlier though. It doesn't support UASP, but it does perform very well for its price. And it sometimes behaves a little more like an SSD than a flash drive, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. For the second thing I wanted to cover, I was prompted by none other than Gordon Hollingworth, the director of engineering at Raspberry Pi, in a Twitter reply. He said, what would be really interesting is how the different SD card, USB flash drives, and NVMe storage compares in terms of booting time and time to start a web page from the command line. First, I'll test boot time performance. The most important thing when measuring boot time is to find a way to compare different devices using an objective measure. That is, you don't want to sit around with a stopwatch and try to time from plug-in to desktop appearing type of boot times. That could be helpful sometimes, but it's not very objective. Instead, I'm going to use a built-in tool in the Raspberry Pi OS called SystemD Analyze. It's a tool that helps you analyze the system manager, and by default, if you just run that command by itself, it'll output the boot time. So I did that three times for each drive, and I averaged the results. All the drives performed pretty well, though the non-UASP drives did tend to be a little slower, with the strange exception of the SanDisk Ultra Flare. The slowest by far was the SanDisk Ultra Fit, which I mentioned in a previous video has a tendency to overheat and slow way down. But there are two important caveats to these boot time numbers. First, I booted with the August 2020 version of the Raspberry Pi OS, and I followed the directions in the blog post linked in the info card above me to configure the USB drive to be able to boot the Pi. Second, it seems like the Pi already optimizes its boot performance really well. The first boot was always a bit slower, but subsequent boots took around 15 to 17 seconds on all the USB drives I tested. The biggest difference was the first boot was much faster on the faster SSDs and NVMe drive, and a little slower on the cheap flash drives and the micro SD card. The other thing that Gordon mentioned in his tweet was testing the web browser launch time from the command line. It actually took a bit of doing, figuring out a way to launch Chromium from the command line, then load a web page, and then quit it, all while getting an accurate, objective time measurement of the process. But in the end, I asked on Twitter about how other people would do this, and I found a neat Node.js utility called Puppeteer, which I could then use to do all that automatically. And then I added the time utility in Linux to benchmark the process three times for each drive. There's a link in the description to a blog post where I describe how I did this benchmark, and it's also right above me in another card. Here are the results. The difference really isn't that big. Definitely not as big as I thought it would be. The faster drives still open Chromium a tiny bit faster, especially on the first launch, but only a tiny bit. I think this just means the caching mechanisms in Linux are good at normalizing performance even for really slow boot volumes, as long as you have enough system memory. Once booted for the second time and after quitting and restarting Chrome, the difference in common UI tests between the slowest drive and the NVMe drive were almost imperceptible. There are some things, especially when you're doing upgrades, installing software, writing files, or working on large projects like the Drupal websites I maintain, where the difference is actually very apparent. And so to test that, I installed PHP 7.3 on each of the drives, and then I checked how long that took. And as with the other performance tests, this one is not the most reliable. I ran it a couple times on some of the drives. I even reflashed the entire OS between each test just to make sure I had a clean slate. And the standard deviation, that is the variance between different test times, was usually around 20%. So take these results with a grain of salt. Generally speaking, the faster drives did do better, 
but it was hard to get good exact numbers from real world use cases. So finally, in some discussion on Hacker News, user Legogris asked about Trim, and he said, are you aware if the GTX and Arcanite support Trim? That definitely makes a difference when considering OS storage. Now, why would Legogris be interested in Trim support? Well, the short answer is, with SSDs, when little bits of data are deleted and new data needs to be written to where the old deleted bits were, the drive can slow down and also do more work than it should have to. This is a really simple answer, but basically think of it like automatic defragmentation for an SSD. I don't know if you've ever had the joy of sitting in front of an old Windows computer watching it defragment your 80 megabyte IDE drive for hours on end, but it's kind of like that, but at warp speed. Trim doesn't defragment technically, but it's similar in that it lets your SSD perform its best through some automatic cleanup processes. The hard thing is, you have to have Trim support in both your operating system, in our case Raspberry Pi OS, which it does, and in the drive controller's firmware. There are a few ways to check for Trim support, like running the fstrim command, sudo fstrim-v slash. If it says the discard operation is not supported, then Trim isn't currently working for your drive. You can also run the lsblk command, lsblk-d. If the disk max value that's returned is 0b, then again, Trim isn't currently working for your drive. Many adapters will work with Trim after you follow a special process to change their provisioning mode. I have a separate blog post that goes into detail on how to do it, and special thanks to Raspberry Pi forum user tom.ty89 for some of the details in that post. The blog post with those instructions is linked in the description below and again in an info card right above me. Some drive controllers may also need a firmware update to enable Trim support, so check on your drive manufacturer's website if there's an update. Here are the results for all the drives I tested. Surprisingly, the Initech enclosure didn't seem to have any Trim support, while the TDBT NVMe enclosure and the Corsair did. Also, and this is something I never realized before, the Raspberry Pi actually supports Trim out of the box for internal microSD cards. But the strangest result I got is that the Arcanite firmware indicated trim support, but when I followed the process to change the provisioning mode and ran FS trim, the drive failed spectacularly, and now I can't even mount or initialize the thing on any computer. I had to order a replacement and it still hasn't come in, so that's why a few of its benchmark results were DNQ for did not qualify. But in the end, I found that there are a lot of different traits to all the drives I tested. If you just need a drive to store large files and you don't need trim, I still think the Arcanite is a great value overall, even though it doesn't support USP. And it explodes when you try enabling trim. But if you're after raw performance and stability, an NVMe inside an enclosure is going to give the best bang for your buck, as well as, at least in the case of the TDBT enclosure, full trim and UASP support. In the end though, if you have any USB 3 drive outside of cheaper flash drives, it's probably going to perform as well as or better than a micro SD card booting on a Raspberry Pi 4. All the tests you see in these videos are possible because of support from viewers like you. And now I feel like I'm watching a PBS show. Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. Anyways, please support me on Patreon or GitHub to keep these videos going. Links are in the description below. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling.